to you. My name's Beverly. What's yours? <laughs> well, well. Welcome, all of you, to our KNX Victory Bells All Girls Jamboree with Mabel Todd, Martha Mears, the Music Maids, Wilhelmina Gould, B. Turpin, and her eight girls of jive, yours truly, Beverly, the Beverly Girl, and our red headed mistress of ceremonies, Irene Tuttle. <laughs> You too, Beverly. Uh, by the way, fellas, if we girls all sound a little goofy tonight, it's, uh, it's not our fault. We did one of our camp shows last Monday night, and we're still feeling the effects of our ride in a recon car. Brother. For you folks that don't happen to know, a recon car is sort of a solid top sheet with the jitters. <laughs> yes? Can we do our number now? It's for a soldier who goes on sentry duty at 615. And we promised we'd let him hear it before he leaves. Well, Pat, we've only got eight minutes left, so you better get started. The music made... Oh, wait a minute. Just a minute, girls. Hello? Oh, hello, Lorene. This is me, Mabel Todd. Oh, I know. Hey, I'm sorry I ain't down there at the studio yet, but I fell. You fell? Did you hurt yourself? No, I fell asleep. I'm, <laughs> I'm on my way down there now, though. I'm quoting from a dress store in Pomona. Well, Mabel, I can hardly hear you. Can you get a little closer to the phone? Why not? The drug store is closed. <laughs> Mabel? Yeah? Mabel, tell me something. What were you doing sleeping this time of day? Oh, I was just taking a nap. Once they be at night, I just can't sleep. Insomnia? No, but just can't sleep. Well, why don't you try my cure? I sleep on my stomach. No, I can't you afford a bed. <laughs> Yes, I can, Mabel. I sleep between the sheets like anybody else. Not me. I sleep between my sister and a window. <laughs> Gee, I ain't a wonderful just to lie in bed and drink to your maid. Oh, have you got a maid? No, but I got a bell. <laughs> I think I'm going to get a maid, though. I'm, I'm getting too old for my mother to dress me. Yes, I think so, too. Now, stop being so silly and get on down here. Okay, but well, wait a minute, Lorraine. Before you hang yourself up, I want to tell you about a spell game. That I got with, that we can play with the soldiers at, at our camp show. Oh, well, good. How do you play it? So you take a picture of Hitler and you put it on the floor and then you all join hands and dance around it. Well, what do you call that game? Ring around the rodent. Ah! <laughs> Ring on the Ring on the assembled soldiers, girl. Listen to the story of a girl who had a million dollars. To believe that he was going home to spend his ten days leave. Some took a taxi cab and some a train. Some bought a ticket for a southbound plane. Some took a trolley to the west side of town. The ten little soldiers, they were homeward bound. Each took a different direction. Each one in search of affection. Imagine their surprise and the shock they received. When they got to do each other, calling on Genevieve. The ten little soldiers went from that to work. The ten little sailor boys had got their first. They crowded her door like a pack of sardines. When out walked Genevieve with ten marines. Each took a different direction. Each one in search of affection. Just imagine the shock we see when they bust to do each other. All on Genevieve. Ten soldiers went back to work. Ten sailor boys got their first. They crowded her door like a pack of sardines. When I bought Genevieve for ten marines, soft marines. Now it's better. having fun during their leaves. You should have seen them over at the Hollywood canteen the other night. It was so crowded, I danced for three hours and my feet never touched the floor once. <laughs> you know, Lorene, I was out with a soldier on leave last night, and he was wonderful. Oh, really, Martha? You know, he has that certain something that 
Everybody just cries for her. A charming personality? No, a sea book. <laughs> By the way, boys, say hello to a swell gal with a voice to match. Martha Mears. <laughs> you in the music department. Well, I've got a number that's based on a famous quotation. Oh, what quotation is that? It's what Premier Molotov of Russia said to President Roosevelt. I came here to talk for Joe. I came here to talk for Joe. He wants me to let you know. He can't keep that day with you tonight. I came here to talk for Joe. See that kid sure loves you so. When he gets the chance, he said he'd ride. That guy has so much courage I've seen the things he can do But he never had the courage To tell you how he feels about you He's got a perfect alibi He can't be here and in the sky So I came here to talk for Because that song was lovely. Thank you, Louise. You know, fellows, Martha doesn't only sing, but she also plays the piano and is quite an accomplished musician. Oh, that ain't nothing. I talk music. You talk music? Yeah, I talk music was easy, but it's hard. <laughs> oh, well, she's here, fellows. Our crack victory bell, Mabel Todd. <laughs> certainly got down here in a hurry from Pomona. Yeah, well, you know them fast trains and them quick automobiles and them speedy buses. Yes. I walked. <laughs> I would have been here sooner, but I stopped by to see my girlfriend, Elsie. You know that doctor she works for? Mm -hmm. Poor soul, he's in the hospital. <laughs> if he's such a good doctor, why doesn't he treat himself? Gosh, no, not him. He charges too much. <laughs> he's the doctor that fixed my head when I was up on the roof of our house and... Car came along and ran over me. Why she sure did hurt, Mabel? Lucky was my head or I Mabel. Might have hurt myself. What's that? How could a car run over you if you were on the roof? Well, you know them California drivers. No sense of direction. <laughs> oh, uh, incidentally, I told Elsie I'd do a recitation for the doctor to kind of cheer him up. So I'll do it. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> this one is for all the mothers. All mothers. Oh, that's nice. Yes. When children are naughty and cranky, don't put or your knee and spanky. Or without supper, don't put them to bed. Just take a crowbar and give them a hit in the head. <laughs> oh, lovely, Mabel. It was so sentimental. Hey, you know, speaking of mothers, my sister Julia sure is worried about her little boy, Melville. 
fact, we all are. Why? Well, at the age of five, he started smoking. And at the age of six, he started drinking. And now he's seven, and yesterday he shot his school teacher with a machine gun. <laughs> and you're worried? Yeah, we're afraid he's going to grow up to be a bad boy. <laughs> My poor sister Beulah, though, she sure is having grief. Besides Melville, she's having trouble with her husband and the furnace. Her husband and the furnace? Yeah, when she watches one, the other goes out. <laughs> See, you know them two, they don't get along any too good, Lorini. She says they was married by a justice of the peace, justice of the peace, but the way they fight, I think it must have been the Secretary of War. <laughs> it ain't very encouraging to a little girl like me with so romantic things, I ain't Lorini. <laughs> About getting married and all no. I'm talking about. Well, yes. Most people, married people, get along fine. Yeah. You mustn't let that make you a um, cynic. A what, sick? Cynic. What's that got to do with marriage? A cynic is where we wash the dishes. A kitchen cynic. That's a sink. Oh, no. Sink is when you make music with your throat. You sing a song. <laughs> you sing a song. Sing a song? Sing is when you make music with your throat, you know. You sing a song. I said, you know, you sing a song. Sing is when you break your arm. You got it in a sling. Oh, that's a sling. What's the matter with you? Sling is when you don't talk good grammar. You talk slang. <laughs> you talk slang. Slang is when you say goodbye to somebody, you know. You say, so lang, see you later. Get <laughs> that's slang. So long is what Dorothy Lamore wears in the movie. Mabel, she wears it so wrong. You're wacky. So wrong is what Kay Kaiser says. That's right. So wrong. <laughs> right or so wrong. Just sing your song, Mabel. My poor Lorini. I guess she is think very bright. Poor oh, soul. I'm so sorry for her. I wander today to the hills of my geese. will be at a Navy training station this coming Monday night. And lots of other places that we'll tell you about later. By the way, the first cadet at Lutefield, Arizona. And it was a request for B. Turpin and her all-girl band to play, I Found a New Baby. But Beverly, the girls are all set to play their new arrangement of diamonds. Now look, honey, if the Air Corps would like to hear our man. So come on, girls. Switch on. Contact. <laughs> Thank you. 
little kid, that was ginger peachy with sugar on it. With a raisin. Hey, 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 Lorini, Lorini. Yes. Valley just gave me my letter for my brother, and he got the dog I sent to him and his buddies to be the mascot of their company. Why, Mabel, that was a very nice thing for you to do. Oh, he's a wonderful dog. Remember that movie, Dog Strong Heart? Yes. Well, this is his brother's weak stomach. <laughs> what else does the letter say? <laughs> He is a fine dog. Bless you, brother. Bless you. <laughs> he is a fine dog, like you said. He is a cross between a parter and a setter. But that's the trouble. He never sets where he points. <laughs> I think he's more... I think he's more of a cockeyed spaniel. I'm glad you like the picture of me in my uniform that I sent you. No, that is not a flower pot I'm holding. It is a G.I. coffee cup. <laughs> we have a new cook at the mess hall. Our old cook is in the hospital. By mistake, he ate some of his own food. <laughs> the new cook is a little better. At least he tries to keep us happy. He even fixes spinach so the boys like it. Before serving, he dips it in beer. <laughs> Find your loving brother, Lem. <laughs> Now that we've had some music and a few laughs, I think it's time we get down to the serious part of our all-girl show. In these days of women doing men's jobs and defense plans and all along the line, we'd like to give you our version of what might happen if women took over the police department. Oh, boys, can you imagine? Hetty Lamar, Lana Turner, and Betty Grable as police women. <laughs> what a crime wave there'd be. Oh, you're not <laughs> kidding, Martha. And now Victory Bells bring you their great dramatic epic, Ladies' Day at the Police Department. Or, if you can't make both ends meet, make one end vegetables, because there's a shortage of meat. Our scene is laid in the office of the chief of police, Lorene Tuttle, and a certain person by the name of Todd is applying for a job. So, Miss Todd, you'd like to get on the police force? Yes, ma'am, I got all the qualifications for being a cop. I got big feet and I can sleep standing up. Ah. Have you had any experience? Well, I was out with a sailor once. And... <laughs> I mean police experience. Well, uh, once I shadowed a crook all day. Did you catch him? No, the sun went down and I lost his shadow. <laughs> this is my assistant, Sergeant Mears. She interviews the new applicants. I'm glad to know you, kiddo. Don't call me kiddo. Okay, kid. Oh. <laughs> Don't be so impertinent. Let's see how much you know about the treatment of a captured criminal. Yes, ma'am. If you caught a thief, would you grill him? Grill him? You're talking about a thief or a hamburger? <laughs> Just imagine barbecued burglars. <laughs> a fine policewoman you'd make. Why, you couldn't even run down a pair of heels. You and who else? <laughs> <laughs> you give me a headache. What was that? What was you saying to me? I said you give me a headache. Ah, go take an aspirin. <laughs> well, Miss Todd, you're not exactly the type we'd like for a police woman, but I'm going to give you a trial. Well, thank you, thank you, ma'am. You're a dear, sweet, kind soul, and just remember, if you ever need a friend, go buy a dog. <laughs> well, I'll see that you get your uniform and all your equipment. Yes, ma'am. Hat pins, a black jack. And a sure shot bean shooter. What, no bulletproof girdles? <laughs> no girdles. And that's a movement that's going to become widespread. <laughs> Now, police woman Todd, your first duty is to take charge here for a while. Yes, ma'am. Sergeant Mears and I have to see the D.A. about the case. If you get a cut price, I'll take a couple of bottles myself. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, wait a minute there. How can I be a lady cop if I ain't got no badge? Oh, I'll get you one later. Okay. Meanwhile, you can wear mine. Okay. It's okay. laying around here someplace. Yeah. Now, take my seat behind this disc. Yes, ma'am. Ouch! What happened? Uh, I just found your badge. <laughs> now, take good care of that badge. I'm very fond of it. Yeah, I'm stuck on it myself. <laughs> goodbye, Officer Todd. I'll see you later. Yeah. Ah, goodbye. Well, now I'm a lady cop. <laughs> Small world, ain't it? <laughs> Gosh, this sure is a quiet place. 
some police station. Nothing going on around here at all. Not a sign of life. Hey, maybe this is a gas station. <laughs> oh, well. Might as well grab myself a little sleep. <laughs> oh, there, there goes the telephone. No rest for the wicked. Oh. Hello, hello, hello! Police talking, officer station talking. I mean, police station officer, police talking. Uh, oh, hello. Hello, hello, police. I'm calling from the old maid's home. Hurry over. The old maid's have just caught a burglar and they're holding him. Well, we'll be right there. Who is this talking? This is the burglar. <laughs> Hey, I, I wonder what's doing on that police radio here. I'm going to take a look. Calling car 32. Calling car 32. Go to Hollywood and Vine. Stunning chiffon evening gown in the window. Pick it up. That is all. Rose O'Day. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I'm going to make a note of that. Well, Officer Todd, I'm back. Oh, hello, cheese. I mean, cheese. <laughs> What's your diction? Yeah. Anything happened since I left? Oh, sure did. The South Side gang is on the loose again. At 1 o'clock, they robbed the first national bank. At 2 o'clock, they robbed the second national bank. So at 3 o'clock, I took a bunch of cops and I waited for them at the third national bank. What happened? Ah, they robbed the first national bank again. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust them dirty crooks. Oh, I'll bet that's the same bunch that robbed a different bank every night last week. Yeah, with them, every night is bank night. <laughs> oh, me, there's that phone again. Hello. Hello, this is Officer Mears. I'm in Chinatown. I just found a corpse. Is he dead? He sure is. Well, we'll be right down. Don't don't let him get away now. Come on, girls. We got work to do. Say, who's going to drive the patrol car? Me. Can you drive? Nope. No? Why, we'll all be killed. Gruesome, are made of... <laughs> Come on. Last one in the patrol wagon gives up her nylon stockings. Well, how do I look at my bobby socks? <laughs> Calling car 13. Calling car 13. Hey, hey, that's us. That's us. Calling car 13. Girls, wipe off your windshield. Someone is stealing your radiator cap. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's no sense of wiping it off. It just gets fogged up again. Hey, our radiator is steaming. Guess we ought to stop, huh? So we can put water in the radiator? No, so we can take the, my eggs out of there. It should be hard-boiled by now. <laughs> Say, Todd, yeah. that looks like the place over there. Pull over to the car! Yes, ma'am. <laughs> clinging to the wall. That ain't no Ivy. That's me. <laughs> Officer Todd, there's a suspicious-looking character over there. I'll handle him. Come here, you. What's your name? My name, Long. What's your first name? Oso. Oso Long? <laughs> yeah, so long. We go now. Bye. <laughs> hey, not so fast there, bud. Who's that guy all tied up over there in the corner? Him captured by Tong. But him no talk. Oh, tongue tied, eh? <laughs> Good joke, I just made up myself. Very funny, but we still haven't found the murderer. Let's look over here behind these bases and bric a brac. Bric a who? Don't you know what bric a brac is? Sir, I seen him in the movies. Frank Buck and bric a brac alive. <laughs> I'm going to try the floor upstairs. You look into these doors here. Okay, kiddo. Nobody in here. Nobody in here. Well, what do you want, nosy? What people are you and I'll plug you? Nobody in here. <laughs> you, I just can't run a dark in here. Whew. It's kind of spooky. It's dark and all. Oh, me. Okay, we got him. Flash the light in his face, Butch. Oh, me, gangsters. It's a lady cop, fellas. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only one thing to do. Mm -hmm. Shoot her. Men, get your guns ready. Oh, no, sir. Just let me say 
say three words. No, get ready, ma'am. Just let me say two words. No, come on, ma'am. Aim. Please, please, sir. Just let me say one word. All right, just yes, be brief. Just one word. What is it? idea anyway. Now I'm afraid it's good night to our listening audience while we go on with more entertainment for the boys down here at the studio. Some of them are going to make personal records which we will send to their folks back home. When you're in Hollywood, drop in and visit us here at KNX. And fellas, bring along your wives and sweethearts. And so for Mabel Todd, Martha Mears, the music maid, B. Turpin and her musical Jills of Jive, Wilhelmina Gould, and Beverly the Revelry Girl, this is Lorene Tuttle saying... Good night. Yeah, good night, fellas. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, and next picture of Bells is produced by Ona Munson and came to you from Columbia Square in Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. KMX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles. <laughs>